Hey there, in this video, I'm going to share with you five helpful mixing and mastering tips that you need to know. Regardless of the style of music you make, these five tips I'll be sharing with you will be very useful. So please pay attention and follow along. If you know you know how to do it, subscribe button down below and let's get started. So the first tip is, it's not just about the plugin. Many beginners who are new to mixing emphasize on getting the latest plugins, getting the most advanced plugins. But a lot of times, what matters most is the technique. Knowing when to use them, how to use them, is more important than actually using the plugin itself. Okay, now because you have access to a premium plugin, doesn't mean that it's what is necessary for that particular project. All right, so it's more important you learn the technique, master the technique before you start looking for more advanced plugins or softwares for mixing and mastering. The second tip I'll be sharing which is make sure you always clean and label your tracks properly. Now when mixing tracks are an easy pile of reaching 30, 40 tracks, sometimes even over a hundred tracks and it can be confusing, right? It can be confusing knowing which is which. So when you label it properly and you also clean it up, taking out the noise, the breath, the session conversations, the headphone bleeds, right, that happens in between takes, try to take them out before you have your mixing session taking place. This will save you a whole lot of time, make your mix a lot cleaner, more productive. So the third tip that most beginners do not want to hear when learning mixing and mastering is mastering the basics. It sounds boring. It sounds like there's a secret, that like, like there's a cheat code that the pros are hiding from you. But that's not the case. All you simply have to do to learn basically anything, not just mixing, even if it's production or any area of release, just learning the basics, learn it so well that you cannot make any more mistakes, okay? That's how you learn how to mix properly, mix and master, okay? Learn the basics, learn how to EQ, learn how to compress, learn how to use delay, learn how to use reverb. I'm talking about even using the ones that come with your software that is the stock plugin. Learn how to use them to their full potential. Learn the why behind how they work. Then you can start looking for more advanced methods of mixing. Because many beginners just get the shiniest plugins that they can lay their hands on, throw it in a mix, and still complain why their mix are not sounding as good as the pros that they look up to. And it all boils down to mastering the basics. When you master the basics, life becomes a whole lot easier for you as a mixing and mastering engineer. So the first tip, which I think is super underrated, is listening to your mix with a fresh pair of ears, preferably the next day. Now, when you're mixing for a while, the ears do adapt to sound. If you've ever had this experience where you're going, walk into a room, everywhere, the noise is loud, but at some point, you adapt to the loud noise in the room and you feel comfortable in there. Same thing applies to mix. You may be mixing and your ears start becoming too comfortable and adapt to the inconsistencies in the mix and you know you to, to spot them out so it's best you come back the next day or much later in the day with fresh pair of ears and then hear what's going on in the mix and i'm sure you're going to find an error or two that could help that you could change and enhance your mix so please always check your mix with a fresh pair of ears and also check your mix with a secondary pair of speakers preferably consumer grade um, speakers okay you may have your studio speakers and headphones but also check it with day-to-day -day speaker for the fifth which is the last but not the least tip is checking for clips and distortion when trying to make your music loud trying to make your mixes and your masters loud many people do overlook headroom okay they do overlook issues of clipping and distortion so it's good to get a loud mix or a loud master right but please check to make sure that it's not distorting and it's not clipping typically you want your songs to be within the minus 10 to minus 8 LEFS range, right? And if it's within that range and it sounds like it's clipping, um, this is what you can do. You can simply take out some low end in the mix so that you can have more headroom. That's a trick you can do. Either take out some frequencies from there, or you can reduce the volume of the bass elements a little bit so you can have more headroom. So typically, you want to always make sure your mixes and your masters, no matter how loud it is, is free from clips and distortion. This is very important that having clips and distortion can ruin the listening experience of your end listener. So those are the five tips, but I'm going to give you a bonus tip, which is to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks. I remain so classy. See you soon. Cheers.